as you can tell this video is not really a bright side it has a bright side in the end but it's not really a good video as you can see um the video is titled why did i think suicide was the answer and i'm gonna actually i told you all in a previous video that i was gonna go more into my backstory about myself and how i am the way i am and why what made me um i know i said i was gonna drop a makeup tutorial really soon i'm having a lot of issues with my um iCloud my videos won't download so I put them in iMovie so I'm trying to use a different program and get those all put in the storage and download it so I'm gonna be dropping that makeup to you really really soon I really am um well this is more about me and my backstory and my underlying issues that not a lot of people see unless you're really close to me like your Kevon or Denisha or something and not really understanding what I've been through and what made me the way I am. I suffer from a really bad anxiety and I also can sometimes go through a chronic depression and um sorry but so yeah so about when I was 14 years old I was in a relationship of course you're young you think that oh okay I'm so much in love like nothing else matters and me I I'm not the type of person I I didn't get a lot of attention when I was younger. Not saying from like parents, I mean like in school. Boys didn't think I was cute. I used to actually get bullied and called ugly when I was in middle school and younger. Um, used to get called ugly. I like different things. I mean, I'm into makeup now, but when I was a kid, I wasn't into stuff like that as much. I was into stuff like, like school, like math and, and reading, and I was like, a different breed from everybody else and I didn't really get along. I had really strict parents so I didn't really go anywhere so the only place that I spent the night at other than like now but when I was younger was my other best friend which is Ja'Kayla. Um, that's the only time I've actually got to go anywhere really was with her and stuff and she had a lot more friends than I did and it was like literally almost one of my only friends. Um, but yeah I, I was in a relationship, I was so in love, like I didn't think anybody actually liked me or thought I was pretty, but he told me different and I was yeah, 14 years old and a lot of things happened with that relationship and the ending. I'm not gonna go into deep detail, but I was really heartbroken after we broke up and other things happened to me, things I haven't even told some people like my mother. So I'm not really gonna go in deep detail about that because I'm still not ready to go there but it sent me into a really really deep dark depression um i was constantly going to the hospital thinking that something's wrong with me like oh i'm having really bad headaches and i couldn't breathe and it's my asthma and all anxiety um that's when all that happened and started um Disclosure, I'm also making this video because I feel like a lot of people do not talk about this topic enough. Anxiety, and I feel like people put it off to the side or don't really understand the concept. And they get closed-minded to what it actually really is. Anxiety is can be over anything. It can be over health, death, anything. It can be over it's just the little little bitty butterflies that you feel in your stomach that's anxiety but some people have it way worse when i used to have anxiety attacks and i still have them now when i used to have anxiety attacks i couldn't breathe i was hyperventilating stomach hurt head hurt sweating horrible sometimes pain shot through my body and it was just like oh man like 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 am I dying like I didn't know that experience didn't know what it was so I constantly went to the hospital every time I left well your blood pressure is fine everything's fine so we were like you're having anxiety anxiety like the hell is that <laughs> and so they eventually prescribed the person for me to talk to her name is Dr. Merriweather. She works at Cardinal Glenn and she's an amazing, amazing woman. Um, but I feel like when I was there, I went with my mom, so we ended up talking about the issues that me and her were having because we constantly clashed heads a lot. But I felt like I didn't really get the help that I needed. So fast forward to now and stuff like that. Um, 
well not now, a little bit after that, I continue to have anxiety issues and these this underlying thing in my head where it was like, like there this person that I'm with now or that relationship, they not they don't love me. They don't think I'm pretty, they don't care about me and it was just like I used to bring a lot of pain on myself even when it wasn't true. So, yeah, even when it wasn't true. So I sat here and I literally, I messed up a lot of relationships that I had with people. Not just like boyfriend, girlfriend, but like friendships and stuff because it was just like, I didn't think more of myself. And this person made me feel like I was beneath them. So I automatically felt like I was beneath people even enduring in relationships after that. And I never felt like anything was real. I always felt like everything was just fake love. And I got to the point where, when I was younger, like 14 or 15, and starting high school and stuff like that, it got to the point where, from which I swear to saying that I was crazy and stuff because of the anxiety attacks that I was having and a lot of things. So it was like not a lot of people really interacted with me when I was in high school. And, um, I got really, really depressed, and I began cutting myself, cutting my arms, cutting my legs, because I didn't know how else to handle that pain, and it just, like, fluctuated, like, constantly, like, I didn't know, and then I got to the point where I actually started taking pills, and I didn't tell anybody, and there was times when I went to the hospital and stuff with stomach pains because of the pills, and nobody would actually even know. Um, got to the point where I was drinking liquor from my dad because he drinks gin, but not a, he's not like a drunk or alcoholic. He just drinks liquor. And I started drinking gin even that young and just to cope with the pain. And it's just like nothing ever helped. So I eventually started working through my problems and stuff. I, I joined cheerleading in school and that was something that really helped and distracted me and I started working and I started getting better but I always had these underlying issues that um, you know like nobody's going to care about me so it doesn't matter and I felt like, so like a lot of times I was saying like I feel like I would be better off dead and not here because like nobody, nobody cares like Nobody cares if I'm here, nobody cares if I'm gone. It might hurt in the moment, but after a while, I'm that person that people will forget about. And I constantly said this, and I constantly said this over and over again. And I always kept that through the years, through my mind and stuff. So, around 2016, I was 17, I met my boyfriend, who I'm with now. His name is Kevon. I love him too. And I actually fell in love with him, unlike the majority of my relationships that I had before him, because it was just like, well, I didn't know what love really was, but it was just like, I, I know what it is now. And then um, everything just seemed like it got better. I still had my underlying issues. I still felt like how I felt. It was just not as bad. So when I went down to school, I, go, I went to UCM. I'm probably gonna end up going back there. I'm trying to go back there because I really enjoyed school. I had, I don't know if it was like the fact that I was far away, but I had a lot of underlying issues even more. I was really depressed. I was really lonely and stuff like that. And I started to feel the same way about him as I did with other people. This is past the whole entire year after we already been together. And um, the longest relationship I ever had and it was times in school where I used to just lay there and I cried and I cried and cried and just asked, like, God, like, why does nobody love me? Why does nobody care about me? Like, why am I always the person who has to sit here and deal, deal with this hard time? And why, why won't you bless me? Like, why won't, why won't you sit here and help me? You see I'm struggling. You see that I, I can't do this by myself, so why won't you help me? And I prayed so much in school, and it was times where I felt like I couldn't do it anymore. It got to the point where one of the times I was in school, I was looking in the mirror, 
Everybody was going. I had two sweet mates, so I loved to death. I fucking loved to death. I clashed with one of them. Her name is Felicity. I clashed with one of them before, and I still love her to death. And Sydney, I I love both of them to death. But they were out going because I told them I didn't feel like going anywhere because they used to always try to take me places and stuff. And those were like my main two people in school. Mixed with my other friend, uh, her name is Dee. Well, one night when they were gone, I wasn't talking to my boyfriend. We had got into it and stuff like that. And I sat there and I was like, I would be so much better if I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't put pain on other people. I wouldn't make people mad. I wouldn't make people feel the way they feel if I wasn't here. How can anybody love me and I don't love myself? So I started trying to take this medicine and it, I felt like something stopped me. Something stopped me. It said, you, you, you Alexis, you can't overcome what you're doing, so stop it. I got to the point where I was in school, I felt like nobody cared, and I got into this reality where it wasn't real, but I felt like it was my reality. And I did something horrible that messed up my relationship. And, and it really hurt. I looked at myself as a different person. I really hated myself. I did something that I, I pray to God nobody will ever do to me and I pray to God that I will be better and I will not have to go through this and I did it to somebody else. And I really, really hurt my boyfriend. And I kept trying to fix it and stuff like that. And I kept trying to fix it. And we were better and, and we were getting better and stuff like that. And trying to fix my relationship and stuff and it was already hard for me trying to fix this relationship that I really really care about so we were starting to get better and stuff and I feel like life was starting to get better and, and then I, I have these moments everybody has these moments when they're in bed lying by themselves and then something hits them the strongest people it doesn't matter who you are when you sit there and you think about it it hits you it hits you really hard and then it's just like, why? Why try? Well, my life started to get a little better and I found out probably around early June, probably like early June, that I was pregnant. <laughs> yeah, I was pregnant. And I was so terrified. I told him that he was terrified too, but we eventually got happy and stuff. Well, everything started to stress me out. All these fluctuating emotions just started overbuilding me and it was just like, I can't. Then I kept trying not to stress myself out. I kept trying to calm down and, and not be that way. So I went to the doctor because I was bleeding a little like light blood and stuff. And I told them what was going on. They was like, oh, that's normal. It was like, that's normal. So I'm just like, okay. All right, so you guys said that's normal. So and I, everybody, I looked it up because I'm a Google expert. Everything, something's wrong with my body. I'm going to look it up on Google. And it happened again. And I started having really bad stomach cramps. I'm just like, what's going on? So around like, I said like June 21st, I went to the doctor and they did an ultrasound, a mercy ultrasound. And they said they didn't, they couldn't find a baby's heartbeat. So I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, what happened? Like, it's like, is it too early to tell? And they was like, well, your dates might be off and stuff. So I'm just like, okay. So, after I left and stuff, well, before I left, they told me that it was a strong possibility I could miscarry. 
or I might be too early. Do you want to take medicine to help that process? And I was like, no, you said it might be too early. I don't want to make something into something it's not. So I waited. And I cried and I cried and I cried and I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. So hard. I prayed so, so hard. And I was scared to go back to the doctor because I didn't want to know, like, I didn't want to think about that. Because even though when I first found out I was pregnant, I was scared. I got to the point where it was just like, I'm going to have a little baby. And it made me so happy. It made me so happy. doctor with my mom I went to the emergency room my mom and they did another ultrasound and it, they told me that I could see my sac starting to deteriorate and fall so I had already started going in the way of miscarriage and I was heartbroken I remember just laying on the table crying so hard and they t kept trying to get me to calm down because you know, after they do the ultrasound, they're supposed to send it off and the doctor come and tell you. They're not supposed to tell you nothing while they're doing it. But she was telling me what she see because she wanted me to know now and don't have that reaction later. So, yeah. She said that she had one too and it happened naturally. So, do I want to like, let it happen naturally? So, I said, okay. So I went home and stuff. I was crying and I was sad and stuff. And what I thought to believe I came on my period. I was like, okay, this must be really happening. Two days later, I started bleeding really bad. Like a really bad. And I was like, mom, this is not normal. I have to go to the doctor. This is not normal, mom. And she was like, well, let's go. So I was in the doctor's room and stuff. Well, I went to the emergency room and stuff. They took all my vitals. Everything was fine and stuff. But I was just having this really, really, really bad bleeding. So I went to the bathroom and a lot of blood had came out. And I was that put me in a wheelchair. Because I, I couldn't, like, disclose it. Sorry, this is very, 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 very detailed. I couldn't wear anything. Not a pad, not a tampon. Everything was bled through clothes. They had to put a giant gauze pad that they use for like surgeries and bandages to like when you're cut here to here or something under me and that's like bled through everything. I was bleeding so much. Almost like I was hemorrhaging. I came back and everything started going black. And I was like, what the fuck? Excuse my language, but I'm like, what the hell ma I can't see. So they rushed me, they put me in a room, they took my blood pressure. 50 over 45. No, 45 over 50. If they did not do something right then and there, I was going to die. And when I was in the hospital, after they got my blood pressure back up and I was laying in the hospital, they said that they would have to do an emergency DNC and I would say, okay, that's fine. But when I was laying in that hospital room, I realized something. I kept saying I wanted to die and I thought about killing myself and everything and I was so, I was terrified. So they did the DNC and stuff and after I went home, I cried and I laid there. And I got to the point where I said, I said, God, why don't you love me? I've been through so much pain in my life. So much pain. Why don't you love me? And my relationship was getting worse. I said, why don't you love me? That was so weak. I lost 40% of my blood in the hospital. I, have, I ain't been able to work for over a month. You might wonder why am I telling everybody this story about myself. 
I came to a realization. Half the things that you stress about in life, they're just not worth it. I was so worried about somebody loving me all my life. But it doesn't matter if you don't love yourself. And that's what you need to do. You have to love yourself. You have to be willing to do it for yourself. Nobody can motivate you to get that better job. Nobody can motivate you to do that business that you want to open down if nobody. You have to motivate yourself. You have to love yourself before you let anybody love you. And if they don't love you, it doesn't matter. Because you love you. I wish I would have realized that a long time ago. Before I've been through the things that I've been through. But I am the way I am because of it. I've been through so much pain and it's never changed the person that I needed to be. That I wanted to be this person who, if I see somebody struggling, I will help them. Financially, mentally, physically, it doesn't matter. I don't care if I know you from a can of paint. I don't care if you're the closest person to me. That's who I am. I treat people how I've always wanted to, wanted to be treated. Always. So, my main message of this video, I want you to know who I am. I want you to know who I am. Because I give myself approximately two years, two years for everybody to know who I am. I am the most kind-hearted person. I don't wish pain on my worst enemies, and that's who I am. I am a person who likes to cook and makeup, as you can tell. I like makeup. I like making people happy. That's me. And I'm also a person who suffers from chronic depression, and I'm also a person who suffers from really bad anxiety, but that's just me. And I love myself. I do. I couldn't love myself before. Because I thought something was wrong with me. And I thought God didn't love me because the way I was. But God, I am the way I am because God loves me. I had to realize that. So for anybody who's struggling to find who they really are, you, you, you will find who you are. You will find that thing that makes you happy. Whether somebody broke your heart, whether if you lost everything, you will find that one thing that nobody can take from you. And that's who you are. Don't let nobody discourage you. Don't let nobody tell you different. You do weird stuff, okay, embrace that. You, you that person who love comic books and science fiction and, and, and will have the weirdest shit going on with you or whatever people may call is weird, that is you. That is you. But don't, 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 please, never, never feel like you're alone. People suffer from the same things. People cry, people get sad, people sit here and get discouraged, people have hard times, people go through way worse things than you will ever go find or go through. I love all of you guys. I'm thankful that you guys even watch my video. Even if it doesn't get a lot of views, even if this message doesn't get spread throughout the world, it doesn't matter. As long as I, I, my story can touch one person. If that, this story and my words can help one person sleep through the night, that's all that matters to me. That's all that matters. I'm open up in discussion in the comments. If 
you have any questions or comments, I want to answer you. I will. I'm going to also leave my email below. If anybody wants to email me or wants to just talk or need to open up, I'm willing to listen. You're not going through anything that you go through alone. So thank you guys for watching this video. I will be dropping another video very soon. Um, I'm not going to tell you guys what it is because this video just came to my mind because I was supposed to be dropping a makeup tutorial it's very soon. But yeah. Thank you guys so much and I'm sorry. I'm a crybaby. I'm sorry for crying and I'm sorry for that. Just thank you. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe and like and comment. And like I said, I'm going to leave my email below. If anybody needs to talk about anything that they're going through in life, you can email me. If I don't reply instantly, it's because I'm probably distracted with other things. But other than that, I'm I'm, I'm going to be looking forward to that, those emails because I want to talk to you all. Thank you.